Chapter 14, Eyes of Wetton Asyctitism Stephen and Craig went to the stump while Kelsey, JP, and Armar were waiting. They agreed to speak inside the stump itself to catch up on who Stephen really is. Even while feeling uncomfortable with his size being bigger than the kids he's with underground, it wasn't hard to get used to thanks to the beanbag Craig offered him to sit in. Last night was the most surreal night I've ever witnessed, Kelsey said, and the whole ruby and aquamarine thing felt more like a fever dream, JP added. But to tell you the truth, when you told us about your call with Garnet, I can't really believe in fever dreams anymore, Armor added. Though since my friends aren't human, they probably don't know what fever dreams are, Stephen said, scratching on the back of his head. I think what really makes me surprised is the fact that Jem is the fact that Jem in your belly button, Armor pointed underneath Stephen's shirt, has a history. He told me about the gem wall with pink diamond and rose quartz, Craig. Craig added, or the rebellion that happens every 5,300 years from where he goes to. His friends became, became more confused and even dumbfounded with the idea. I know it hurts my head too. I'm more shocked that this whole rebellion thing that took place with the Iceman was more brought up in school, Kelsey commented. The thing is, there's no such thing as gem culture, even if we made it out to be, Stephen confessed. I've spent my life without going to school, which would have made me be like you kids, but at the same time, I would have been in high school instead of elementary school. My brother would have given you a tour at his school if he wasn't hiding from you right now, Craig lowered his head. Did it have to do with the big boom from yesterday, JP wondered. I swear, it wasn't like how I pictured it when hearing it. This caused Steven to sign while looking above from the stump's exit. If you picture it, was it pink? No. Was last night more than enough to prove it wasn't anything but pink? Pink just isn't my color. Even when he was glowing, Quake pointed at Steven. I'm just saying... I would love to glow, just not the color pink, but I did understand the whole ruby and- Look, I'm not saying you're wrong, it's just there's so much going on, I can't process all the information, Stephen replied, taking a deep breath. Ruby and Aquamarine could still be around, but if I wasn't here today, they would still track me down. Hey, I'm aware how hazardous they are, especially when they fuse together, like you told us. So, what makes you think staying with us is a good idea, Kelsey wondered. Because I know they won't hurt you or any kids in this creek. The adults will find out and it will cause them to be banned from town, Stephen replied. But that's just me looking at the positives. We could still help you, Armor offered. I wanted to do it with what Craig did when he saved you. Trust me, I appreciate your loyalty. But you saw how powerful they are. I know, I'm not blind. But even if, I, if they somehow get banned from town, they would still catch you if they're the last enemies you have. Stephen couldn't disagree if he left Hecoten right now. No matter where he goes, he won't be able to be free from any danger from the gems he can't change. You know, with so many kids here, I don't know if they see the difference between a human or a gem. Well, we and some of the people with us knew the difference, even if we didn't get all the answers, Kelsey replied. True, but if the people are spreading the information from last night, they won't get the full idea. Quake can tell Steven had been overthinking the situation, but at the same time, he still didn't start off with, the, with which place he wanted to go to in the creek. How about we start doing activities in the creek? Yeah, we shouldn't stay here all day, Steven stood up from the beanpeg. When we get out of the stump, you can give me the map. No problem. With everyone standing up, Craig pulled the rope that's tied to his chair as he lifted himself off the ground. Upon getting out of the stump, 
he helped the others to get out with Kelsey and JP being the final ones. He gave Steven the map of the creek, which gave him options on where he wants to go. Let's go to Lamp City, Steven offered. That's where Campbell is at, who was with us last night, Alma replied. With your size, you won't be able to ride a bike though. Yeah, but since he saw what happened, I'm sure he'll be all right by seeing my gym powers. I don't have a problem with that, JP said. Can I pick the next location after that? Okay, let's get moving. The group headed to the first destination, leaving the stump to begin the new friend's journey. Meanwhile, Wildernessa and Cheese Sticks took notice of Steven and the others from behind. Wildernessa remembered the gem on Steven's belly button from last night. She wanted to get to know it as much as Quake, but she knew Quake is dealing with a lot right now. That flying creature from last night really has something against that Steven guy. Wildernessa spoke quietly. We need to make sure Steven doesn't get attacked. Cheese Sticks growled, agreeing with his owner. While they slowly followed them, Stephen caught on to where he and the group were in the creek. He paid attention to the directions from the map. But as soon he and the others followed that direction, Craig slowed down. The headache he had from yesterday would turn, but it had a big effect on his eyes. He stopped himself while the group continued without him. His vision began getting worse. He got on his knees, rubbing his eyes to make it stop, but to no avail. What's wrong with my eyes? When he opened his eyes, he saw pitch pinkness everywhere. The headache slowly went away, but his vision caught him off guard. Outside of his vision, his eyes turned pink, just like Stephen's powers, as if his saliva did more than expected. I see so much pink, it's not even annoying, he said to himself. He looked at his hands that were the same glow Steven had. When he clapped, sparks came out, but only in his vision. He clapped three times with sparks getting bigger from each clap. He got up from his knees to witness his friends from a distance. A bright shade of pink, then gradually changed back to normal colors. When he turned around, he saw cheese sticks right in front of them with Wildernessa right next to him. With so much pink closer to him, he fell back onto the ground. Quake, Wildernessa took notice of his friend's eyes. Vanessa, Quake got up, getting back up. I just saw you and cheese sticks after whooping his eyes again. He opened them to see all colors again in pink. You saw me and cheese sticks in the color pink? I saw pink in your eyes. You did? Yes, my eyes don't lie. Quake looked at his hands in normal color. I saw everything pink, like pure pinkness everywhere. When Wilderness noticed Steven coming back, she backed away with cheese sticks from him in, in self-defense from his gem powers. Quake, why did you stop? I was worried for a second. Sorry, it's just I had. He tripped, Wilderness chimed in. He, he just tripped because he was clumsy today. When, Will when Stephen took notice of Wilderness, he remembered she was one of the people who witnessed the mayhem from last night. And then he turned to Cheese Sticks. I saw him when Bernard gave me a tour in the neighborhood. When he looked closely at Cheese Sticks, his size was almost the same as Lion's. You do realize he was with me last night, right? There was too much to handle, Quake replied. But I did so- Wilderness covered his mouth while Steven placed his hand on Cheese Sticks' face. I've seen bigger dogs, but not like this. Do you have a pet? Yes. His name is Lion, who is pink. This made Wilderness awkwardly grinned. Pink, you don't say. Quake moved Wilderness's hand out of his way while walking up to Steven. Steven, I know you're giving everything a chance, but shouldn't we go to Ramp City now? Just give me a minute. Quake 
wanted to tell Stephen what he just ex what he what he just had experienced, but with the way Wildernessa prevented him from telling the truth, he would have confronted Wildernessa, but she wasn't messing with him, meaning she was catching on to who Stephen is. As Wildernessa looked at Stephen, Stephen turned his attention to her. I've noticed you were writing him j just like Connie does. Who's Connie? Wildernessa asked. She's my girlfriend. Well, w when we were young, we wrote lying together, but we went through portals when we needed it. Craig and Wildernessa looked at each other from hearing Steven's story. Craig in may enjoy portals, but Wildernessa managed to know Steven a little more, even if it had nothing to do with his gem. Is Lion a gem? Yes. He's with the Crystal Gems, but I haven't heard about him since. I wouldn't leave Cheese Sticks all alone, but if the Crystal Gems are taking good care of him, it shows he's not alone. Despite the gesture, Steven let go of Cheese Sticks. Lion's not that type of pet, you know, not eating, sleepless, doing missions. He has a huge history, Quake turned to Wildernessa. Anyway, we should go. Just when Steven's about to go, he immediately notices that Quake and Wildernessa look similar to him and Quake. The way I think about it, you kind of remind me of what me and Connie did before she became my girlfriend. Both Quake and Wildernessa blushed, blushed, which caused Quake to grab Steven's arm. Okay, let's head to Amp City now, Quake. Steven let go of him. I'm not saying you two should be boyfriend and girlfriend, I'm just saying you two remind me of my past. I have a past with cheese sticks and the animals, Wilderness responded. Do you take care of animals? Not really, but for gems, kind of. This caused Wilderness to come up with an idea. Maybe later can you go on my mission with cheese sticks? There could be an animal trapped. I don't know about today, but if there is an animal trapped, I remember that before I consider leaving the creek. There's always tomorrow. I can still do the do the mission with just me and cheese sticks. She then lifted her hand up in front of Steven. I'm Wildernessa. Steven accepted the handshake while smiling. Happy to meet you. I have to say, I like your pet cheese sticks. Thanks. He's not a lion, but still a good pet. Trust me, Steven breaks the head shake. If you met lion, he's more than just a lion. Let's go, Quag. Bye, Vanessa. Quag waved as he and Steven made their way to Ramp City. Wildernessa had her chance to meet Steven, even if she didn't get the chance to see his gem again. But if he's willing to help her out with her mission, she might tell him something about what he can do with his gem. Of course, she hasn't begun that Quake's eyes were pink and made sure, made sure Steven doesn't have too much to handle. I don't think a doctor can handle someone like Steven with pink eyes. She got on top of cheese sticks. I just hope he's alright. She had it in the opposite direction to search for animals for the safety of their nature and so of her nature.